leaf. Yes, we're going to save leaves today. How she do I don't know how to explain this well. Hey guys, it's Jay and I'm here with my top 15 books of 2015. I know it's kind of late because we're pretty much done January. I'm always late with these kinds of things, so you guys should expect it by now. I'm sorry. I'm kind of like changing it up a little bit. I only have 13 books that I really thought were good enough to be on this list for 2015. So what I'm doing is my top 13 books of 2015 and then two of my least favorite books of 2015. So it ends up equaling 15. I'm just cheating a little bit like I do with everything. I'm a cheater. What can I say? I'm sorry. <laughs> the books weren't necessarily released in 2015. They could have been released like in 1956 for all I care, but if I read them in 2015 for the first time, I'm counting them for my top 15 because that was when I read them and therefore that's what they were released to me. Okay, deal with that. So without further ado, let us get started. I'm going to start with my two least favorite books of 2015 just so we get the negativity out of the way at the very beginning. My second least favorite book of 2015 is Love After Dust by James Ward. I thought this book was going to be so good. The back of the book sounded so cool. It had so much potential to be amazing. It says humans had known that the world might come to an end at some point, but in the end, what had come calling had been more terrifying, more surprising, and more devastating than anyone had dreamed. There was no solution, no fix, just panic, panic and death. Like, it sounds like it could be so interesting. Like, what, what is causing this panic and death? But it was just, it fell so short for me. I thought it was going to be so good, and it just ended up being, like, really boring, and it took me a long time to get through because it was just, like, repeating the same thing over and over again which is one of my biggest pet peeves. Do not repeat the exact same thing over and over again in books. Please, thank you, oh my god. I give it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads if you really want to know. My least favorite book. I'm sure you can all guess this. My least favorite book of 2015 was Billy by Anna Gavalda. Which is so depressing because Gavalda is so much fun to say, but I mean, I had a reason to say it all the time because I always use this book for like my least enjoyable book. It was so boring. It hurt my soul how boring it was. Like. How, how do you make a book this boring? It's about this girl named Billy and her friend and they're stuck in this mountain and it's her like flashback story talking to a star. Like, what? It was just not good. It's a book translated from French to English so like maybe that's why. Maybe it's cooler in French. I don't know but I just, I hated it. I gave it a 1 out of 5 stars on Goodreads so. Now on to the positivity! My top 13 books of 2015! My 13th book is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. I absolutely adored this book. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Mia who gets in a car crash and it leaves her in a coma and she needs to decide if she's gonna wake up from this coma or pass on to heaven. I almost cried like three times in this book, which if you know me, I don't cry at books, so it was like a huge deal to me that I almost cried. I absolutely love the flashbacks in this story. It was really cool to be in the present and then all of a sudden you're back in Mia's life in the past. It was just really interesting and I really enjoyed it. Coming in at number 12 is Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. I absolutely adored this book as well. You're gonna hear me say I absolutely adored this book a million times in this video. I'm sorry, it just comes out of my face. But this book follows Min, who I absolutely loved. Here we go again. I absolutely loved her as a main character. It's basically Min looking through this old box of things that her boyfriend Ed gave her or she picked up on dates and you kind of don't realize that these things would be significant to a person until she explains why they were significant in the relationship and why they either made the relationship better or made the relationship worse and it's just really interesting to see her thoughts. It's such an easy book to read and it was so cool looking at all these things and it has pictures in it of the stuff that she like kept it was just a really interesting take on a breakup. I wanted Alan and Min to be together so badly. Please make it happen, Daniel Holder. Please make it happen. Coming in at number 11 is This Song Will Save Your Life by Layla Sales. I loved this book as well. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Basically, it's about this girl named Elise and she's suicidal and she's planning on killing herself and then she finds this nightclub called Start and she decides that she's going to be a DJ there and her love for music basically brings her out of this funk and it's just such a good story. It was really entertaining, it was such a good book, it was super fast paced. Elise has such amazing character development in this book and she's so relatable and it's just such a good character for girls to read about. I don't know, I just found it so refreshing to read. 
I also really liked how every single character actually had a personality. There wasn't just random characters thrown in there just for fun to be like, I need a character who's like this, go. Everybody kind of developed on their own and it was just really nice to read. Book number 10 is Stolen by Lucy Christopher. I really enjoyed this book. It's a 16 year old named Gemma who gets taken to Australia by a man named Ty. As Gemma spends more time with Ty, she starts to realize he's not as bad as she once thought he was, and it's kind of like a Stockholm Syndrome kind of thing, but it was so intriguing to read. Like, you think it would be really creepy and it's like, oh god no, like, this is weird. But it's in a letter format, and it's just, it's so interesting. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really liked it. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did, so it was a very pleasant surprise. I would definitely pick it up if I were you, because it's it's so good. It's so good. Also, I find it kind of creepy that the entire time I was kind of like wanting them to get together. Is that creepy? I feel like that's creepy, but it was, you can't help it. Just, I don't know. It's weird. I'm weird. I know. Coming in at number 9 is The Perfect Mother by Nina Darton. I really enjoyed this book. I received it off of Goodreads for a giveaway, so like I didn't really think anything of it. I was just kind of like, that sounds cool. But the plot twist at the end, it's so good. You don't expect it to happen, and you're just sitting there like, Sorry, what? Did, what? It's about this mother who has her daughter, Emma, studying abroad in Spain, and she gets this phone call in the middle of the night, and basically it's saying that Emma is the main suspect for this murder of a young Spanish boy, and she flies out to Spain, and she's trying to learn all these things about what happened and what's going on, and she realizes that Emma isn't exactly who she thought she was. It's really interesting to see how the mom's tension kind of builds when she communicates and like interacts with her daughter. Because she once thought her daughter was this amazing individual and then she's kind of not how she was when she left. And it's just really interesting to see how the relationships changed and stuff like that. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Coming in at number 8 is Upside Down by Leah Riley. It, the book follows Natalia Stolfi who's 21 and she's suffering from OCD. Her family's kind of falling apart because her older sister Pippa recently died. And basically she decides that she's going to turn her whole life upside down. What I did there. Hilarious, I know. And go study abroad in Melbourne, Australia. She meets this boy named Bran, and he's kind of this badass guy who you know you don't really want to get into because he's kind of an asshole, but she can't stop thinking about him. He's been burned in the past, and he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to get into this relationship thing, but they can't stay apart and their love blossoms, and it's just so good. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I gave it a 3 when I first read it, and then I kind of thought back on it, and I was like, no, it, it deserves a 4, so we're giving it a 4. Their love definitely wasn't an insta-love, which is why I think I love the book so much. Because we all know one of my pet peeves is insta-love, which is ironic because a lot of the books that I like have insta-love in it. I don't know, I know I'm weird. It's the book was so funny. Natalia's hilarious. She's so witty and sassy, and just her comebacks were perfection. The book really focused on self-discovery, which I liked because it wasn't just your typical lovey-dovey romance book. Coming in at book number seven is Half Bad by Sally Green. This book follows Nathan. He's half White Witch, which are the good witches, and half Black Witch, which is the bad witch. His father, Marcus, is the biggest, baddest Black Witch out there. The book basically follows Nathan and he's trying to survive until his 17th birthday when he receives these three gifts that make him a full-fledged witch. I really enjoyed the book. It was so good. It was really entertaining. It kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I loved the writing style in this book. I thought it was really unique. The only big thing I had with the book was the torture scenes because I'm kind of squeamish with that stuff, so like all the torture and stuff was kind of like, oh god, stop, please stop. And that's why it's only number seven, because I think that it would be higher if I wasn't so grossed out by it. Coming in at book number six is The Merciless by Danielle Vega. We all know I love this book. It's about these girls who decide that their friend is a demon and she needs to be exercised, and it's just so thrilling to read. You can't put it down once you start. You have to finish it. I stayed up to like 4.30 in the morning just to finish it. The girls are insane. Who does that to people? I don't understand where the logic was when they were planning this. I don't get it. The only thing is, torture scenes again. I can't handle them and therefore it's lower than I probably would have rated it. Should be a 5. Only gave it a 4 because gross. Coming in at number 5 is Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. I loved this book. It was so inspiring. It's about this girl named Melinda Saradino who breaks up this giant party in the summer and everybody ends up hating her on her first day and basically the entire year of her freshman year of high school. 
And it's just kind of her story about being bullied and all that stuff that comes along with high school. It's such a beautiful story. It was so amazingly written. If you haven't read it already, please read it. It's so good. It's one an award, like clearly it's good. Coming in at number four is going to be Dead to You by Lisa McMahon. We all know I love this book. I only give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads because of the cliffhanger. It's about a boy who gets kidnapped from his front yard when he was seven and nine years later he's coming back into his family and it's kind of all the stuff that goes down and there's a lot of tension that comes with him returning to the family and it's just such a good book. It's so thrilling. It gets you on the edge of your seat the entire time. You can't put it down. And at number three is Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. It's about a zombie. I'm sure you've all seen the movie. It's so good. I gave it a five out of five stars on Goodreads. It's about this zombie named R and he helps this girl Julie escape from a zombie attack and it's just such a good love story but it's like not a love story at the same time it's hard to explain you've probably seen the movie you probably know what it's about but i don't want to spoil it just in case the cover is incredible so i mean what other reason do you have to read a book if the cover is nice we all judge books by its covers don't pretend you don't because i know you do coming in at number two is going to be daddy by pj ferguson i read this on like the last day of 2015. It's about this man named Joe Williams and he lives this mundane life with his twin sons Sean and Mikey and his wife Maddie. Something happens in his family and it raises all this commotion and it's up to these 12 jury members to either serve justice or not and it's just really, really good. I didn't expect it to like it as much as I did. I honestly was like, okay, it's probably gonna be a three star book. It's a five star book, like a solid five. It's really slow at the beginning and then all of a sudden it's just like Plot twist galore. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. It's so good. Read the book. And number one, my favorite book of 2015 is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. I loved this book. It's about Anna. She's studying abroad in Paris and she meets this boy named Etienne Saint Clair. Anna is such a funny character. She's so much fun to read about. I was laughing out loud and people were staring at me like I was crazy when I was reading this book. I absolutely loved it. It's so good. Pick it up. If you want something cute and fluffy, which was exactly what I needed at the time I read it, which is probably one of the reasons I like it so much, but it's just super cute, super duper recommend this book. Okay, okay. Alright guys, so that was my top 15 of 2015 with a little cheat, but that's fine. I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye! I absolutely love this book. Wow, every time. Two twin. Obviously, he has two twin sons because they're twins. Like, what?